I'll be honest with being a minute late. Don't tell me it's playing up again. Oh dear, oh dear. The internet's laggy, isn't it? Oh, fuck me. Every time I do one of these, it goes laggy. Right. I'm going to kill this off and come back because it's it's really laggy. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to kill this off because it's as laggy as hell. Uh, I'll have to restart my phone. Two minutes, I'll be back. One does apologise massively. Stupid bloody phone. Always does it on these fucking ugly. I meant. Right, it's working properly in there. No problem, miss, everyone's gone off. Hmm. I'll have to kill this and come back. Stupid bloody phone. I, I couldn't get back onto YouTube. It, and when I, I restarted the phone, got back onto YouTube, it wouldn't let me back in. Uh, oh, no, here we go. I'll go it. Stay on. Uh, 18 all of a sudden. And welcome, everyone. One does apologise. The phone was having a funky. It was laggy as hell. And then when I restarted, I couldn't get back on. Uh, couldn't get back onto YouTube. Good evening. 4.5, what's that for? What, my crappy phone? Yeah, I won't give it a 4.5 at the moment. It's quite good now. The picture quality is better. I do apologise. So straight in. Lemonade. Uh, very good, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Apart from phone-related issues, where the phone decides... I've been Gordon's, bless you. So, yeah, yeah, fucking phone. <laughs> One does apologise. Good evening. So, let me get a, uh, let me get a beer. <clears throat> Echoing? You joking? <coughs> so, been watching my ring? <laughs> I really ought to restart, didn't I? Oh well, not much I can do. Good evening. Yeah, 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 I always colour up quite well in the sun, to be fair. Good evening, Scott. How are we? So, I kind of regret moving to eight o'clock, but I've just had my dinner, so I'm all right. Yeah, that's me air. <laughs> so this is American Oak Aged Rum Ale. Good evening. No, no, no. Not the famous prune wine. No, no, no. This is the... Uh, I might get the prune wine out. Good evening, Norman. <clears throat> so, yeah. £24 for the kit. From, no, not straight on the prune wine. No, no, no. It's got a lovely smokiness on the nose, this has. The Stone Crow's on tonight. Aren't you watching that? <coughs> I won't go any further. Um, Cooper's stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're only here for the prune wine. I'll dash it out at some stage. I've got the um, good evening. This is the American Oak Age Rum Ale. Homebrew. 24, 25 pound a kit. Um, you add oak to it. And, you know, it's got a lovely aroma to it. And I'll tell you what, today's craft beer kits are as good as some of the stuff you get out of cans. I've got that double IPA to drink as well. Own brew Friday, this Friday. Next week, wine and spirits. Oh yeah. Wine Thursday, spirits Friday. Our big Tesco at Top Valley's got none in. All bloody, all the shelves are empty. Waste of time. Oh, the Cronenberg one from Alder. Yeah, it's not too bad. It is what it is, you know, it's Aldi's, um, yeah, I'm rotating for Thursdays and Fridays just to do something different, you know. I like the, I like the, the real ales, the craft beers, but 
I want to change. So lovely pour this. And uh, it's pouring a lot nicer and tastes a lot nicer than that stuff I had the other night, that Ninkazi. Yeah. The only Kazi I had was the next morning when I was on the Kazi. 15 minutes. Yeah. A bit like a war zone afterwards. <laughs> so, yeah. Lovely, long-lasting flavour with this. Yeah, it has. It's, it's maturing. Lovely. You do get the smokiness on the nose. <laughs> the poet, I tell you what, the snake venom, I need to do it again. I, I need to do it again. Yeah, yeah. When I when one day when I finally reach 2,000 subscribers, I, I'll crack another one open. Whether it's snake venom again, we go we go down snake venom road for the second time. Or we get something equally as strong and not too expensive. I'm not paying silly money for beers. 40 quid's fucking enough. Pardon my French. Good on you. Yeah. It's really good taste to it. Um, he has got a great bar. He definitely has. So... Happy St. George's Day, everyone. I do hope we're all suitably um, refreshed and uh, tanked, half tanked at least. Yeah, yeah, I drank that. Yeah, the snake venom. Oh. Prune wine and Russian Imperial. I've got no Russian Imperial. I drank it all. Yeah, it was far too nice. And I actually gave two, or two bottles away. Oh, don't tell me someone's messaging me. Iron Brew? You're joking. What? Iron Brew is in alcoholic. Good taste to this. I'm sure it's about 6% if memory serves me correctly. Up at 4am. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can't be touching that. Yeah, yeah, Mocha Blocker Stout, tried it many times. It's all right for Williams Brothers. Yeah, it's it's a decent supermarket craft beer, really. It's a damn sight better than that double IPA from um, Audi. I've just had a wrap with a chicken, chicken kebab in a wrap. Oh, just the chicken meat, chicken kebab meat and chips. So I shouldn't get too drunk tonight. Shouldn't be the operative word. Twice as oh, it was ridiculously awful, wasn't it? I drank the old can only because I wanted to get to the end to say how bad it was. A bit like that in cars the other night. That was awful. Absolutely awful. I brewed better than that many, many times. Um. How they dare put stuff like that out is, is beyond me. Um, yeah, I, I don't think until COVID's been and done one, will we see more beer festivals. Chockmeister with treacle. Ooh. Wilco's Chockmeister. That's a decent, that is, Wilco's Chockmeister. It's, it's, um, it's a decent kit. Oh, that there's horsey and then there's fucking I mean there's farmhouse and then there's shit house. That was shit house. It was I've never tasted or smelled anything ever like it. It was uh, let's hope not. We don't want another lockdown. We can't really afford it. The country, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Audi Scottish Beer Festival next week oh no not another beer festival I can't afford it I'm behind now Every, everyone else has already done all the cloud waters from bloody uh, Tesco's I haven't even seen them yet Will you be getting your mates? Well, you live near Scotland, so you can go and pop up, can't you? 
Mr. Bowman. I need to go on trips around the country, go into different parts of the country, getting beers. And when I'm in South, when I'm in Southampton in June, I'm hitting their local um, Tesco's and Morrison's, see what's out. <clears throat> Scots pay per, per unit, though, don't they? I'll have to have a look, see what they've got, see if there's out interesting. It's the interesting ones, isn't it? Not the stuff you've drank 20 times before. You've got a beer festival tomorrow. Wow, that's early. Bloody hell. Very early for a beer festival. Huh? The, bird, <coughs> the Buxton Lupulus, it was all right. I didn't really rate it that much. I didn't like the vocation... Tropical. I thought that was very weak. And I thought the whole, I did like Brew Dog's um, beer they brought out, but the rest of them I thought that was quite weak, really. Oh, cheers. You like the tropical? It just shows you, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it just shows you how different we all are. I had it, I thought it was wishy washy and not much to it. But <clears throat> all depends on the day you drank it. Yeah, the Mallow Laser Quest. I did like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that was quite palatable. I mean, Brewdog can be hit and miss as well with some of their beers, you know. Um, no, you look if you can get the bleeders as well. Yeah, I mean, it's, it might be worth a punt and trying it again. If you know you're getting a new version of Tropical. Right, that'd be interesting. Maybe they looked at the, maybe they've they seen the comments, you know, because somebody may pay uh, notice of comments. Mansfield Tesco's massive. Oh, I might drive back through Mansfield tomorrow afternoon. Might get the wife to drive us back and uh, put the sat nav in. And have a look and try and get to the right one. <clears throat> we're good at getting lost, we are. We're coming back from Doncaster, so we're coming down the down the county. We don't want that shit coming to the rest of the UK. Could you imagine Imperial Stouts? They'll be frightening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the new car. Wife's driving. I'm the passenger. <laughs> So she gets to drive the new car and I'll just get to sit there <clears throat> and moan when she does it wrong. And it's one of them start-stop jobbies as well, so that'll be interesting at traffic lights. <laughs> oh dear. I've never had one of them, so... Beer in the new car, or bin. I've been in it, I've drove it, but I've not... Uh, no, not been no beer, no. We'll be getting some beers on the way back, maybe. Hopefully, hopefully get a bit on the way in. Right, I'll have to keep my eye out for that then. Because I, I may go in and re-review re it. Uh, I've got a BMW 1 Series. Apparently you dip your clutch and it stops it from being start and stop as far as I know. I don't know. There is tap house. Hey, fair play you there. <clears throat> Sometimes you have to do these things. Hopefully a lot. Yeah, it's a good boot. Decent sized boot. Yeah, I might have to pop into Mansfield on the way home. Yeah. I'm hoping people in Mansfield haven't got haven't got a lot of money and don't buy all the craft beers. Yeah, because people in Top Valley Tesco's, they, they wreck the craft beers. So, but we've also got Bullwell in Nottingham as well. And obviously in Bullwell, they're all a bit skint <clears throat> and inbreeding. The Vimto wine, I've not looked at it for a few days, to be fair. <clears throat> I need to go and look at it tomorrow. 
Not much taste, yeah, I would think. And money. <laughs> Especially in Bullwell. The Nickham in Mans Nickham in Bullwell, I know. Um, yeah, with the Vimto wine. I need to find my blooming hydrometer. I put it down somewhere. I can't find the sodding thing. And um, put drop the hydrometer in it. See if it's see if it's fermented. If it hasn't, I need to go and get some wine yeast. Um, you know, with the car crash last week, it's it's totally thrown me. I'm 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 all over the place at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it out the next morning. Yeah, yeah. When I went for shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. No, it's not. The thermometer's behind me. No. I tried to siphon the petrol out of the old car. I was just, all I was doing was breathing in bleeding um, petrol fumes. I had to give it up in the end. Yeah, there's only so much petrol fumes you can, I don't know how these thieves do it. They're bloody good, aren't they? They, they must walk away high on petrol fumes. Just goes to show you, I'll never, I'll never be a thief. Yeah. I'd be half an hour trying to get in a car. Half an hour trying to suck petrol out. Good evening. So the first homebrew on the list. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hoe Garden Wheat Beer. Yeah, I had it 10 years ago. Hated it. Absolutely bloody hated it. Tasted disgusting. My mate brought me in the Bell Inn in Nottingham. Famous pub in Nottingham. Lots of good beers. And he says, oh, you'll like this. Drank it. I'm like, oh, my God. Jesus Christ, why would you why would you commit suicide? You know, as bad as things got for me last year with mental health, I would never. I know where Whitemore is, obviously. I would never do things like that. And you know that people, the drivers and the passengers, will that'll be in their heads forever. You know, I mean, if you're gonna do it, jump off a cliff. You know, where no one can see you. But not in front of a train. Lead. <laughs> Lead in your pencil. So this has aged quite nicely, to be fair. Um, slightly hazy, it, it looks here. Um, yeah, there's... Five or six new beers coming to Sainsbury's. Uh, the Bearhawk beers are getting chopped and changed and new beers coming out. So we've got new beers at Sainsbury's. ABV, I think it's 6% if memory serves me correctly. I may be wrong. Um, there's new beers at Sainsbury's coming. There's new beers at Asda. There's new beers at Tesco's. There's a possible little beer festival coming. Fucking hell. How expensive is it to be a beer fan? Um, and that's if you can get them all. Yeah, we've got a big, we've got a big Asda in West Bridgeford, not far away. Good evening. So this is an American oak aged rum ale. So there's like a spirity element there's certainly an oak. You really do get the oak element. And the oak and the rum give both the aroma and the flavour. And it is actually quite really, it's quite nice. Uh, 40 pints in Sutton. Might have to, on the way home, I might have to tap in Tesco Extra and drive a different way on the way home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some things you don't want to see. I mean, I've saw someone die, uh, dead, um, and he, he he died in front of us, basically. He was waving a little white handkerchief on the back walk of the Arboretum, and then he just went. And we're, we're walking, patrolling, we're walking the park, and uh, what's he doing? And then he just went. 
and uh, he was what they, what they do with white handkerchief. It's it's, um, it's obviously for for blokes uh, of the um, homosexual variety, or just a couple of men looking for a bit of fun with another man, um, as happens on parks. And uh, yeah, he killed over and died, and uh, with his trousers down and all that. And uh, we were there till three in the bleeding morning because the police came. And then we had to say about, you know, what he was doing and that. And it was, it was all a bit strange, to be fair. Carlisle was going to get all the beers first. Yeah, I think, I think the bad company. So it took about, I think it was two weeks to ferment. And it's been in the bottle now since about November. So it's been about five months. So it's well matured, really nice. Oh, not good, not good, Nita. That does not good at all. Some things can affect you for life. Yeah, Bad Co had a lot in Asda at one stage, didn't they? We went to an Asda near Alton Towers, uh, no, Drayton Manor rather, Tamworth, and uh, their their range of Bad Co beers was immense. And they all had like daft, net, daft numbers. It was like 04, 11, 06, 10. And uh, instead of putting an actual name on the bloody beer. But yeah, they want all the best. Yeah, the uh, good evening. The beer walls took a battering just lately. I've not bought any beers for a while, so it's took a right battering. Ooh, not good. Love Brewing, I think. It was either Love Brewing or it was um, Creative Wine Making. Both very decent um, homebrew sites. Love Brewing, they do their beer works um, kits and wine works kits. So that they, you can get a lot of stuff at home brewing and you can get clones of like London Pride and a lot of the landlord, a lot of the big uh names in british supermarket beers and you can get the clones of them brew to bottle yeah i suppose sometimes if it's cheap they don't want to put the expensive um hops and um, yeast and all that into it yeah ilkeston for creative rhyme making yeah the bloke there's sand as well no 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 i haven't got a motor no, I wouldn't trust myself. I'd end up dying after a few days. I don't think I've done their box Boston Tea Party. I try and keep away from four packs because I'm stuck then with, with stuff I can't review. Brew works Bohemian Pills. Yeah, there's some Belgian stuff I want to try and brew. I want to get something with a nice plum in it. Good evening, mate. Um, I'm very well, actually. Nice sunny day, and it's nice to be on the beer at last. And it's uh, been a while. Well, a few hours. <laughs> I mean, I'd, I'd have done a beer review at half past three, and then a next one at four o'clock. Yeah, it took me about 20 seconds to net Castle Rock IPA. Went down a treat. It was woof and gone. Good evening. So that was nice. Um, so it's it's Young's American Oak Aged Rum Ale. So next on the list, what can I have next? Wilco Mexican Beer Kit. Yeah, that's supposed to be a decent kit as well. Harvest Pale. Was that on, on in bottle, obviously? Not on draft. On draft, it's exceptional. It is really exceptional. I'm not killing the uh, the thing off tonight, so I'm just going to keep going. Because it's all homebrew and uh, more of a chat about homebrew rather than actually reviewing. So, I'm going to get the pear wine out and see if it's as bad as it was the other week. So. Oof. 
small glass because I'm not getting a big glass. I'm not getting a big glass of that. It was it was awful the other week. <clears throat> so oh, sounds like they're going for a tittle. <clears throat> so this is the pear wine made from pears from the pear tree in my garden. Yeah, prune juice wine last year. <laughs> Castle Rock IPA, yeah, it was amazing, mate. Amazing, a, a truly classic craft beer. Castle Rock are doing some really good. Looks okay. Yeah, so it's pear wine. Yeah, I've got my rhubarb. I've, I've drank all the rhubarb ginger. But I've still got half a bottle of the rhubarb. So, yeah, um... With this, I had a load of spare pears off the tree. I found about 200 pears. We don't even eat bloody pears. Don't even know why. I, don't even know why I put the tree in. I might dig it up this year. Been to Titanic Brewery today. Yeah, fantastic choice. To the shop, because the shop's amazing. You can pick and mix the three for fives. And they have the bucket near the door with the stuff with bits of glass on. Jobs are good in there. Good evening. And I hope you're well. Yeah, very well. I'm, I'm very well. Yes, I won't be well after about an hour when I'm tanked. But um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. So yeah, this is quite hazy. I didn't use any finings. <laughs> Good evening, Max. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've always got plenty of toilet rolls. Yeah. And we've got two toilets as well, funnily enough. So yeah, uh, pear wine. Um, I boiled the pears and then I end up, in the end, I ended up chucking a load of pears in. To be honest, I'm never going to do it again. It, it was a one-off and it didn't really work out as I thought it was going to do. Yeah. So yeah, no dodgy farts down the shed. Yeah, yeah. Good thing there's no smelly vision. Eh? Can you imagine smelly vision? Oh dear, that'd be horrendous, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah we don't want to go down that road. So on the nose. Ah, very good, thank you, and uh, good evening. They do a barley wine, don't they? Um, Hobson's. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Do you know, there was this little old bloke outside Asda one day. How many, how many beers do Pine to do? Just out of curiosity, how many different varieties? You know, in total, it'd be interesting for me. I'm hoping to get one next month, hoping. Barley wines, it depends what. Barley wines, it's basically, barley wine isn't actually a blooming wine. Um, It's just a strong beer, really. It's just a name for a beer. But I do like barley wines, I mean, um. But then you've got imperial stouts, you've got strong ales. You know, the classifications between beers is it's so muddled. Um, there is a book. I've got the flipping book somewhere. Oh, you know when you want something? It's like my hydrometer. Um, if you're going to try a barley wine, best thing I can say to you to do is go to somewhere like Sainsbury's or Tesco's and um 36 yeah go to sainsbury's or tesco's and there's a barley wine there try that barley wine first it's a standard barley wine it's nothing too exciting if you like that and then then go to places like trembling madness and see how you go on uh, my dad used to like barley wine but it didn't do him any favors um yeah it was always a bit too uh bit too tanked on the barley wine and I did have a barley wine the other day from, I think it was Alter Ego Brewing in Ilkeston in Nottingham. You know, just on the outskirts of Nottingham. And um, it was 8.1%. But barley wines vary from 6 to anything, you know, to 10% even. Uh, depending on where you get it from and what variety of barley wine. As with all beers, there's lots of different classifications. If you're after 
a homebrew barley wine, Woodford's Headcracker is an exceptional barley wine. Comes out, Gold Label's the one. Yeah, Gold Label's the one in the supermarkets, barley wine. Um, so opium beers. Yeah, I'll try a lot more beers. 10%. Yeah, I made I made one from Woodford Z Cracker. So Woodford's a very well known um, company that do beer and homebrew kits, and their their barley wine is absolutely stunning. Yeah, and you get forty pints of it. I might have to re-review it because it was I like strong beers, you know. Funnily enough, and uh, yeah, it goes down well. Yeah, gold label. I'm not sure if it's as strong as it used to be, but uh, oh, that was a mean, mean beer. Orkney Brewery School Splitter. Ooh. <laughs> so, on the nose, you do get the beer on the nose. Now, the last time I drank this, it was taking the skin off around my face. Or well, it was certainly acting. It was certainly doing something to the airs where I've not shaved and I've not shaved again as well. So this could be interesting. I always thought, I always thought Gold Label used to be about 11%. Me and my dad used to drink it and uh, he, used to, he used to go off his head on it. I mean, he was six foot four. It was a big bloke. God knows what happened to me. I've got my mum's jeans. <clears throat> Luscious nights. Luscious lights. Ah, yes. Yes, from Lidl at one stage that was. Lidl had it on a beer festival at one, one, one stage. Because I've reviewed that. It's a nice beer as well. Really nice. Right, let's try. See how we go. <laughs> okay, so it's been a few months. Um, it's not burning my mouth. It's definitely got some potency to it now. Um, I say it's got stronger. Oh, blimey. Blimey neck. I might have to keep this for, for October. Just let it mature a bit longer. Oh, that's strong, that is. And this is the thing, you know, keeping wine in barrels... Or bottles, even if you haven't got a barrel, but keeping it longer than what you're supposed to. <laughs> um, it's interesting to see how things mature, you know. Are you up at 3 a.m. tomorrow? Bless you, mate. I would think it's close to about 15%. Yeah, I would think it is. Yeah, I'm getting no taste of it. Oh, you're working tomorrow. Oh, bless you. Yeah, I'm working tomorrow as well. Not quite, not early. I'm working at quarter to eight for till about two o'clock and then straight up for the car. And then I'm working Sunday as well. I've got, um, I've got a garden to do on Sunday. Freeze distill it and make it pear brandy. Yeah. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it, to distill it? Yeah, it's all down, it's all beer money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to, haven't you? Because with so many beers coming out at the moment, I, I can't keep up. And I want to get some beer orders off the internet. There's some great, uh, in. There's some. that's why I've been doing these um, shout outs to breweries. Because there's some good breweries out there. But I can't even get up at the bleak. I can't even get near. I need to get the supermarket stuff out of the way first before it's all gone again. And I'm desperate to get on the Northern Monk, uh, the Northern Monk's Death Star. Seven till seven. Ooh. It makes for a long day, doesn't it? And then you see the pissy arses come out at, well, 11 o'clock onwards. So for, ooh, for everybody who's not talking and in the background, this is a hazy pear wine. Homebrew pear wine made just from pears, sugar and yeast. Uh, boiled pears. Um, yeah, it was an experiment. Would I do it again? No, not again, no. But it has made a very strong 
very strong pure wine. Uh, the other month it tasted like um, something that's taken the airs off my face. Now it's not so bad at all, really. It's tough though. It's certainly tough. I woke up at 2.30 to turn the TV off because uh, me and both wife fell asleep. And then... my brother he's had a drink and i'm not answering him when he's had a drink pissed out of his head yeah yeah unless he's watching me on youtube then sorry darren <laughs> but don't fucking phone me when i'm doing a beer review <clears throat> yeah i'm not in <laughs> yeah 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 he's had a few beers tonight he was messaging me earlier and he messaged me about five times on the road and i'm thinking oh no is it is it, is it in the beer when he hits the beer, he gets very sentimental and uh, starts to go on. I used to be like that, you know, sleeping only four hours. <laughs> I know it's not you, mate. It's my brother, Dad. I've got a brother called Darren. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm legend, definitely. So this is taking some drinking. It's a little bit... Would I brew it again? No, no, no. And I'm going to neck it because it's, I don't like it. Oh. Whew. It's a strong bleeder. It's an opal fruit. Yeah. Made to make your mouth water. Yeah, definitely. Whew. Um, I've got to, I'm going to test the Oda rhubarb wine and see how that's going. And uh, I'm hoping that um, I'm hoping, once I've got my finances sorted out, to get a pinter and start doing, and then start brewing with a pinter as well. Yeah, fuck it. Oh. Oh, that's strong. No, that's my brother. Never, never answer anybody when they've been on the piss. It's deadly. I never ring anybody up when I've had a drink. And uh, one, I don't, I don't, I, I can't be done with people waffling. I mean, I waffle enough on videos, on beer reviews. So I don't want to listen to somebody else waffling. It just gets on your nerves. So, time for a bit of rhubarb wine. See how that's cooking. And uh, oh, I'm going to be steaming. This is what I'm thinking. I'm going to do. I'm going to do an unboxing, and then I'm going to do um, a, a, the first time doing the brewing, and then I'm going to do the actual review of the brew. So there'll there'll be a few beer videos going out there, and I'll try and be professional and not swear. Yeah, try. Beer before wine, you'll feel fine. Dear. Not me. <laughs> so, my rhubarb at both work and home is already that high. Yes, yeah, it's, it's doing decent. having a piss so this is the rhubarb wine it's slightly the colour's not far away from what I've just poured out to be fair yeah I want to have a piss you know when I'm having a piss I'll go outside no no it's gone very clear it, it did have a pink tinge to it at one stage let me just smell the nose beautiful beautiful rhubarb on the nose there's a sweet rhubarb aroma to it No, um, there's lots of own, own brewers in the room, 
Um, I'll tell you in a second. Yeah, so there's lots of home brewers in the room. Adding sugar's not bad. Just make sure you give it a good stir. And if it's not bubbling, what I try and do is give it a good stir. Make sure the heat, make sure it's in a warm room. It's critical. The temperature's critical. Give it a good stir. If it's not bubbling after a few days, at the worst, go and buy some more beer yeast. Chuck the beer yeast in. But it should, it should crack on. It should. Anyway, as for this, rhubarb on the nose. Yeah, brew belts. I would say brew belts. Especially if you if the room's not temp... Mm. I mean, I've come home and then I've come home into, into the shed one day. I have three beer kits here. And uh, it was 130, it was 130 degrees in here. Good evening. I'm not that pissed, honestly. I just missed it. Right. So, rhubarb on the nose. Oh. So that's been over six months maturing in a plastic barrel and i'll show you the plastic barrels one minute here we go oh you bastard so yeah so yeah the pear wines in that barrel there's the raggy's t-shirt in this barrel is the rhubarb wine it's been there over six months it's even got an airlock on the top funnily enough and um yeah, it's absolutely bob on. It's um, the taste is amazing. There's the top shelf, by the way. Here we go. Nope, oh, one minute. That's it. Yeah, it's a classic glass. So, yeah, our good man Liam Wusco, his wife does, she is personalized addiction on Facebook. And you know, if you need a glass, or t-shirts or there's lots of stuff she does it's worth keeping an eye on that page and it's like there you know if you're buying something for somebody and they are they're doing stuff um i don't know it's, they don't have to be a beer reviewer they can just be anybody and to get a glass that's got all the phrases on they use um jobs are good and it's a roller coaster dog shit review dog shit review i mean that's awesome and then the red card. The red card's synonymous with me because I get a red card off the wife when I'm pissed. And then on the back, right, the Raggies, Beers, Wines and Spirits review. I mean, what do you pay for this? My wife paid double the amount from Etsy. And uh, here's the glass. I'll show you the glass. <coughs> so she paid for that from Etsy. And you can hardly see, you can just about see the, the writing. Um, and it is, it's, it's not, yeah, it's only, it's only, it's only the same as this, but the writing's nowhere near as good, but she bought two, bless her. Um, so, put them back on my glass wall, don't want to, don't want to wreck my glass, I'll drink out of it one day, at the moment I'm just savouring the glass. Good evening to whoever I missed. I do apologise. So, yeah, rhubarb wine. So, rhubarb wine. How you met rhubarb wine? First things first, get yourself some rhubarb. If you can, grow the rhubarb yourself. Much better, much, much better. You get it nice and fresh. Rhubarb is quite expensive to buy. Go to a supermarket, though. You're looking at about £2.50's worth of rhubarb. If you're going to buy it, get your rhubarb, chop it up into little bits, put it in a pan, boil it in the pan, put it into the fermentation bucket, boil the sugar. You can have, um, if you're doing wine, any four or six kilos of sugar. It's up to you how far you want to go, how, how much. Um, add the sugar, you know, you boil the sugar to dissolve the sugar, add it. Cold water, hot and cold water till you get to 23 litres. Um, once you get to 23 litres, make sure it's lukewarm because you don't want to knacker the yeast. 
Put your yeast in, wine yeast. Wilco sell it a quid, jobs are good. Em. Put the wine yeast in, leave it for a few weeks, anything up to a month, depending. If you've got a, a belt, you know, even better. If you've got an airing cupboard, that's probably the best place because of the temperature. But make sure when you, go, if you get a fermentation bucket, if you go into 23 litres, get a bloody 30 litre bucket. You need space for the, for the for, you know, when it bubbles up, you need space. Pumpkin wine now. Oh, that does sound nice. Bless you. Same with, you can do rhubarb and ginger wine as well. So the same thing for the rhubarb, but then you get ginger root. You boil the ginger root and you add that with the rhubarb. And it makes rhubarb and ginger wine. And it's, it's so easy. Homebrew is so damn easy. Two years old. Oh, that's a good maturity to it then. Oh, bless you. So, yeah. I will get, I've got the bottle on the floor, the, floor, the famed prune juice wine. No, 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 we're not twins, no, no. I'm far better looking. <coughs> no, I'm not. No, no. No, we're not twins. No, he's five years older than me. So I've got a brother, Darren, who's the oldest. I've got a brother, Sean, who lives in Chicago. I've got a sister, Alison, who lives in Redditch. Um, and I've got another sister, Joanne, who's, well, yeah, yeah. That's enough said about that. We're a bit early for the prune. I might have a drop of Barola or some at first. Or I might just stick to the fucking prune, bollocks for it. There's a lovely sweetness to this. Um, ABV wise, very difficult to tell. Yeah, a 30 litre bucket is essential for homebrew. If you're doing anything on a 23 litre or 24 litre kit, freeze distill the prune. I don't even know how to do that, to be fair. I mean, I don't know. You know, this, this stuff you know and this stuff you don't know. I mean, I don't know how to freeze distill. I know how to distill, but I don't know how to freeze this distill. I make a prune brandy. Yeah. Ooh. Shitting. <clears throat> I mean, it's made very nice, easy drinking, sweetish rhubarb wine. The only thing is the colour's probably not what it once was. It's It seems to have lost some of its colour. Is that how you do it? How the hell do you distill it then? <clears throat> Or does does some of it not turn to um yeah 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 I get there in the end. It's been a long day. Ah right yeah. That's what I thought you that's what I thought it meant. I was just double checking. Yeah. I was thinking of putting it through a an actual air still and di distilling it that way. That'd be strange. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. <clears throat> I know now though. A fermentation chamber. Oh, do divulge. I just missed that last comment about the thermostat as well. I do hate. There we go. Missing comments. Yeah, you're getting into um, quite the advanced home brewing. I mean, me, I am very much a basic home brewer. I mean, you get, I've seen some of these, you know, like, you know, the grain fathers and all these other things where basically they're turning into like a, a micro brewer. And that's a very interesting concept. Um, but obviously it's all on money. The pinter is very interesting. Our good friend Liam Rusko, he's actually got a pint. I think he's got two of them. And uh, I, I'm going to buy one, hopefully, when I get some pennies again. 
I've been wiped out with a new car, so it's wiped all my finances out. But I want to get one and start brewing um, and to try it, you know, because a lot of people are doing it. It's like a fashionable thing. I've got a fridge upstairs, to be fair. It's interesting what people do into, you know, the, the, the world of brewing is so damn interesting. It really is. I can't wait to get a pint and start going down that road. Don't let the boss see you. <laughs> yeah, my boss is a bit more cute than that, I know. Yeah. Liam's the best man. Yeah, he's, he's answering. Yeah, yeah, he's the best man to answer that. And I, oh, I want to know how many different beers there are, because if I'm doing something like a pinter, I want to know there's a, a, a massive variation of beers and not just 10 bloody IPAs, you know, um, like porters, stouts and things like that. There's 12. That's not a lot, is it? I mean, it's a nice amount, but it's not a massive amount. You know, if you was talking 30, that would be good. A stout and a cider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're always better off. Same with own brewing. You're always better off going a bit further. Yeah. Mm. So, I'll neck this. Lagers and pails. Do they? That's interesting. I suppose, I suppose as it gets bigger, then... Um, more people buy it then it's going to explode even further that is interesting yeah i mean i know it's 75 quid for the pint eh? you get two two kits free so that's good good evening again so yeah that it is interesting you know for me if i'm going to do the pinter i want stuff that like imperial stouts and like plum porters, you know, you know, your box ticking beers. And uh, I suppose in some ways, once once I get one and, uh, you know, and if they watch me comment, you know, or people comment, they might even do certain things. You know, I keep trying to get St. Peter's Brewery to bring out a plum porter kit, but they won't have it. And a Christmas beer, their Christmas beer is ex exceptional. And a kit of that would be unbelievable. Well, I think there's always, there's, where there's a way, with, with these pinter kits, uh, where there's a will, there's a way. Because what is it, 13 quid for the kit? Well, and that brews 10 pints. Well, you could always use uh, different kits, brew short, and brew a much stronger beer or am i think am i going down the wrong road can i buy a simply ginger beer kit brew it short to 10 liters and put it through the pinter is that possible here's me person on camera asking the asking the audience strange isn't it you don't get this on other beer reviews do you but uh, yeah, it's all about community. The community, if the community know more than you, then it's always a good thing. You can. Aha. Uh -huh. That's interesting. Because sometimes, you know, I don't want 24 litres. I don't want 40 pints of one blooming kit. But to buy the kit for 15 quid, brew it to what? 10, is it 10 pints? Or is it more than 10 pints? No, I'm thinking of brewing short and getting a much, much, much more stronger beer. On the trooper. Good in you. 10 pints then. So, flipping heck, 40 pints down to 10. Wow. That would increase the ABV. Something special. Whoa. That makes the pinter even more interesting because it, it kind of forces you. Yeah. What about a kilo of sugar?
a gardener doing doggy style. I've seen lots of people doing doggy style, but that one, that one gardeners, it carbonates itself, right. Up to 11% ABV. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? I mean, basically you could turn Maybe you could turn like a 4%er into an, a 10 or 11%er just by brewing it ridiculously short. That is interesting. But obviously adding the right yeast, I suppose. They're going cheap. <laughs> so anyway. Um, Because I'm thinking like um, IPAs and things like that. Ah, is it now? Ah, rightio. That's interesting. So I'm going to have a, a bit of a taste. Oh, God. Thank God I'm not touching the red, red wines tonight. So this is the prune wine, the famous prune wine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was a means to an end. Right. I think, you know, you know, with with home brewers and I like, I like what you're saying, mixed reviews. With homebrew, you live and learn, you know, um, cleanliness is godliness. You have to be clean. You have to be so clean. You have to follow instructions. So anyway, here's the prune wine. This Bonjour. So, this is well over a year old. Well over, maybe two years now. It's, yeah, it's about 18 months old. Yeah, I'll keep the rest of the bottle. It never goes off. <laughs> so, the reason behind prune wine was <laughs> the reason behind prune wine is prunes are basically dried plums i didn't know that you know i'm a gardener and i didn't know that they were dried plums i read the thing and it said dried plums i'm thinking oh look after your own brew equipment like your tackle i inspect regular <laughs> it's the prune wine mater and welcome back so yeah, so I did this because um, it's dried plums. Plenty of talk. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've already got. I'm already feeling a bit windy already. To be fair, bless you. So I got four cartons of prune wine, four bags of sugar, and yeast. I brewed it, and uh, yeah. It didn't taste the plums. And uh, it looked even worse than it does now. So it's got a brown look to it. Yeah. Shit in. Uh, yeah, somewhat. Yes, yes, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, one day I drank two pints of prune wine. And... Uh, as I'm drinking it, all of a sudden it's like, brrr, and I'm like, fucking hell. And it, and it was bubbling. It was like Pato Banton. You could you could feel it bubbling down you. Oh, I'll save you some later, don't you, brother? <laughs> I was going to get rid of it all at one stage, but our good friend, Mr. Goated, he also wants it some as well. God knows why he would. <laughs> Pato Blanton, yeah, man. That's a banton. So, on the nose. And you do get a whiff of plum on the nose. You also get the prune, but you certainly get a whiff of plum on the nose. If, if you have issues with your digestion system, this stuff will help you because on the nose. <laughs> 
this stuff will help you. You know, if you, you know if you struggle to go for a shite, basically, for, for, for those who don't understand what I'm saying. Um, I can always leave it to October. It'll still be good then. It's, it's got, it's, 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 it lasts beyond time. It's, it's, it's amazing how, how long it lasts. I don't think it ever goes off. It's not like normal wine. It's got to be a good evening. It's got to be about 17 or 18 percent. The strength is something. Good evening, mate. Greetings from Ireland. Yeah, can't wait to go back to. Well, my my wife, she's from London, Derry, so we can't wait to go back. It's been a long time, missing all the family. Her family is spread between Northern and Southern Ireland, and uh, even though I don't understand the old Protestant and Catholic thing, which I don't really get involved in. You know, religion in this country is a shit as well in the UK. <laughs> Too many religions. But um, it's a great place in the world. Yeah. Can't wait to go to the theme park as well. Um, Tato Park at some stage. And uh, get a load of beers from Tesco's in London, Derry. Four for six quid. All beers I've never had before. Oh, can't wait. There's a couple in here that I think I've tried the um, Tato Park. Yeah, I've not been. I want to go on the wooden roller coaster. I think it's Ku Kalanen. Good evening, Thomas. Tato Park is crisp. Yeah, it's a it's a crisp factory. My stool. God knows. <laughs> it's a crisp factory. It's also got a theme park attached. It's ever so quirky. But the theme park itself is a cracking theme park and it's developing into a really good theme park. It's about two hours drive from London, Derry. So we want to go over probably next year. It's no point this year. It's just a waste of time with this COVID rubbish. But next year, get over, take the car over because I'm never, ever flying again. I flew back in a storm and uh, the fucking plane was going like this. And uh, didn't think we'd ever hit the floor. Well, not safely at least. And uh, so next time we're going over on the, on, we're going to drive up to Stranraer. We'll go past Carlisle. I'll give a wave to Greg. For, well, not to, not to Ireland anyway. Um, I'll fly to Spain. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't, you don't hit storms normally. Tato, Tato cribs are oh, lovely. My wife loves them. Um, and I, I do apologise. Formula Rossa. Yeah, that's in Dubai. So, on with the taste. Oh. oh. It's got better. It's not the harsh uh, prune wine that it used to be, but it is still, it's still a taste. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh. I've never come so close to shitting myself as I did on that plane journey. Yeah. And uh, I do apologise to everybody in the background. Uh, yeah, you don't need to hear that. And as for shitting myself, poo mine. Hundred and forty nine miles an hour. Formula Rossa. Oh. Yeah, let's all drive up to Carlisle. <laughs> Yeah, I just need a car that can make it to Carlisle. Oh, so did you do the old um, oh, it's crowdfunding then for Brewdog to get them to get to get it? Right, so. I've drove past Carlisle. I've seen it on the way up to Stranraer. It's a bloody long journey, though. Stranraer's a bastard to get to. And it's a right poxy little place when you get there as well. When am I getting them? When the bloody Tesco's around me actually gets them in stock. Uh, the wife's been two or three days on the run now, picking milk up. And I've said to her, go on the beer aisle and have a look. 
And if something says cloud water, let me know. And she's been there. And the only new beer that's actually in stock was the Brewdog versus Salt. I mean, normally we go from Liverpool, to be fair, Birkenhead, uh, on, on the ferry. Oh. So you, you've got the Brewdog versus Salt. Greg, Greg, Mr. Ball and Beer Reviews, he'll know all of them more than I will. But you've got you've got the um you've got the four pack, I think it's the cloud water four pack, you've got the two um sours, you've got the brew by numbers, you've got cloud water single cans, brew dog versus salt. So there's quite a few. I bet there's about 30 quid's worth. Good night, Max. See you later, matey. I wore a mask in ages. Only when I go in shops, mind you. No, no, I won't go in a fighter jet airplane. No, no, no. <laughs> I've been on um, in Ferrari land on Red Force, uh, the roller coaster that's 112 miles per hour. And it goes up to 360 feet in the air. I've been on that. That was good. In, t in two seconds, you're 360 foot up in the air. That's 112 miles per hour. <laughs> Fair play. Our good man, Mr. Bowman Beer Reviews, does get all the beer reviews first, which must. It doesn't really bother me. Although I, I do like to wind him, I do like to stir it. But it must bother some of the bigger beer reviewers. It must. They must look and think, he's getting them beers before me. I'll get them at some stage. At some stage. Yeah, the Vault City Sours, yeah. I watched Simon earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting beers for free. We wish. Bloody hell. It's an expensive hobby beer reviewing. Yeah. To the toilet. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's potent. There's a real potency to this now. For the tub, uh, the tub's broke at the moment, to be fair. No, no, no. It took a couple of weeks, really. You know, bit by bit uh, at night. Didn't really take that long, to be fair. Um, I built a lot of it out of just reclaimed wood. And then I use shiplap around the outside just to frame it off to make it look nice. I mean, this this bay room is 16 by 10. Uh, the octub room is about uh, two and a half by two and a half metres. It's strong. It's testing. It's not easy to drink. You know, you know you're drinking it. The alcohol content is through the roof. Um, bloody hell, it's got to be upwards of 15%. Obviously, I can't tell. I ain't got my bloody, the hydrometer, so I won't be able to tell anyway. Shit lap. <laughs> you know, ship. <laughs> and uh, have a good night, mate. And have a good day at work tomorrow. Is it your last day at work tomorrow for the week? I mean, like most people, we're all waiting for that Northern Monk beer to come out. That's the one that's ticking everybody's boxes. My phone, someone's just messaged me.
Oh yeah, it is your last one. Good on you. A week off, lovely. I ain't had a week off since Christmas. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I've got the holidays, but what's the point? There's no point booking holidays because you can't go nowhere. And uh, so I'm booking two days in June for my birthday, the Thursday and Friday. Ah, right, yeah. I'll have a look afterwards. Yeah, I'm not interested in non-alcohol stuff. So that the Northern Monk beer is Death Star. It's a 12% Imperial Stout. Mr. Borman will know more about the variety than I will. Um, yeah, I'm just a pisshead. Who <coughs> drinks beer? Yeah. I mean, for me, I've drank ooh, a couple of cl cloud waters. So I can't wait to try them just to see what all the fuss is about. Are they any better? Good on you, matey. That's what I like to hear. The best of us are honest. You know, it's all about honesty. You know, if you're honest with yourself and you know you drink too much, then you, you've already won the battle because you know. It's those who drink from who wake up in the morning and get on the vodka and are drinking all day long and say, I haven't got a problem. Uh, you have. <laughs> Those who have four or five pints at night, you're a heavy drinker. You ne not necessarily have got a problem. That's the difference between um, pissheads and those with a real issue, you know. Although saying that, if you work a night shift and you come home and you hit the beer in the morning, then fair play because it's part of your working day. And you're hitting the beer so you can have a sleep. Death Star's in tomorrow. <sighs> We're back in the country of you then, because um, I'm hoping Nottingham, Nottinghamshire is going to get some in. I have no friends in Tesco's working, so I can't verify anything. Sainsbury's, I can get hold of my mates, because I used to work at Sainsbury's. But my Tesco, I ain't got no mates in Tesco's. Yeah, for 10 quid you do. Yeah, definitely. I, I do agree. Flavourless beers. No, I've not heard of them. No. Kind of puts you off with the name flavourless, doesn't it? It's like... Uh, yeah. Same branch of the Pissheads Authority. <clears throat> I mean, I'll be honest. I have a drink. Because um, it sorts out my anxiety. It helps me chill. It's not, to, it's not for the sake of just getting pissed. It helps me chill. Cannabis beers. You know, if they help you chill out and it's legal, fair play. You know, I... Oh. 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 It's so bloody strong. I mean, it's been maturing for a year and a half. Carling, it's flavourless. <laughs> it's not the best, is it? Oh. So, yeah, it's not got the nicest of colours, has it? I mean, let's be fair, it hasn't. You know, it's never going to win the colour war. If you're suffering with constipation, though, uh, one, it helps you get drunk. Two, it'll help you go for a shite. Yeah, sometimes, you know, we all do what we do. You know, it's um, life. Everyone does what they do to chill. Oh, God, it's bloody strong. In some ways, I mean, I, I've took uh, anxiety tablets and uh, they just close your brain they close off a lot of your brain. I do like a dot there, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, the stigma, there's a stigma associated with drinking. And the the, the, UK, like the government with this, more than 
I don't know, 14 bloody units or 28 units a week. And, uh, you know, you, you hear that and you hear the preachers on TV and there's so much preaching. No, I'm extra sure I'll go. I've got a good stomach. That beer the other night proved it, that Ninkazi, because, oh my gosh, it was rough. Yeah, I've had that as well. I've had people come on here live and saying to me, how much do you drink? And you think to myself, and I'm like, you know, you, why, why are you even questioning? Yeah, it's a, it's a strange one. It's um, And you don't know if they're just trying to goad you. You know, it's, it's, it's strange, it is. The monks, they're the biggest pissheads of all. Oh. 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 So, this is one of those wines. It's a man's wine. Well, not a man's wine. It's, it's for anybody who can take the taste. It's strong. It's not pleasant. It's going to knock the balls out of you. I can't wait for you to drink some of this. Yeah, but be it in May or October, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Taste. I tell you what, you know you're drinking it. it. It delivers. I mean, I've drank a lot of stuff over the years, so you know, there's not much that really phases me, but it still phases me. Out of five. Oh, it's a ball banging experience. Oh dear. It's something like you've never had before. Yeah, 600 out of five. Anyway, so last beer of the night, and this is a double IPA from our very, very good friend of the channel, Tad and Drinking Partners. Obviously, he's in the chat now. And um, so this is made... <laughs> bucket list drink. Fucking hell, can't wait till you drink it. We'll have, we'll have a glass together. We'll sit. <laughs> then again, from, you're from up north. Those from up north are more manly than us in the Midlands. But this will test your manliness. <laughs> Not at all. I'm used to it, so I know what it's like. Tastes like marzipan. Ooh. Sometimes, you know, it's worth putting more yeast in and going again. Oh, dear. I'm feeling it now. Half tanked. So this is Brew Your Own IPA and Wilco's IPA Gold. One and a half kilo of dextrose and WLP. Yeah, definitely. 99 yeast. And it was brewed on the 1st of the 1st, 21. It's round about 9%. And it hit me for six the other week. And I'm drinking somebody else's own brew wine. So all's good. In we go. And try and pour a decent pint, you know. Fragrances. You want one of the small the fragrances that I come out with. So so there we go. Uh, as usual, it's not the greatest to pause. You know, I never was the good. Oh, hey, oh, spillage. Bloody hell. Even on the taste of the foam. Yeah, even on the taste of the foam. It's got a wallop to it. 
and uh, oh my god it's strong oh look at it it's getting bigger that's what she said that's proper own brew that is so you can see the carbonation fucking hell it's still dripping and that you can see the carbonation there and the taste is amazing trust me this is an amazing beer and uh, this brewing two beer kits together going short with decent not brew it not sugar but dextrose with decent yeast whoa and you know yeah to buy the proper craft beer stuff i know i need to keep going um to buy the proper craft beer equipment is not cheap but you can do so much via homebrew. Fucking hell. Even the head's got some balls on it. Get the dirt out of the glass. Which is why, you know, I want to do the same with an Imperial kit. Get an Imperial kit. Oh God, today's homebrew kits. If you're new to homebrew, start off on Wilco's. Learn your trade a bit. Go from Wilco's to some of the £25 kits. You know, some of the kits that emulate some of the decent stuff. And then, you know, advance further. We go for the more expensive kits. It's such an interesting hobby. Homebrew is amazing, especially nowadays. There are so many good homebrew uh, beer kits out there that replicate good craft beer. Yeah, it's two kits. Tad will know more than me because he's the one who brewed it. So it's two kits brewed together. emulate yeah 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 i could say lots of long words as well i'm trying to think of a long word now it's from mary poppins the film but i can't remember the bloody word now no it's gone it ends in expialidocious but i can't remember the rest of it oh there you go so Brew your own IPA and Wilco's IPA Gold. Discombobulating. Oh, yes. yes. It was discombobulating this today. Yes. Ah. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Now, there's a long word. Even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious. Are you in, are you in Weatherspoons? It's Dougie here. Slippy's gone for a piss. It's Dougie. Hello, Dougie. <laughs> oh, Ninkazi. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I actually was nice on Instagram. I put down, it was, um, what was the word? I actually tagged Wild Bear in. And I, I, I just want to see if anybody from Wild Bear actually takes notice of internet reviews. They probably don't, you know. Local breweries do, because local breweries, um, every little bit of exposure helps. Mega breweries, they're not really bothered, are they? I don't think, at least. So. You know, mixing two kits together sounds really... It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very interesting, you know, idea. Oh, God. I mean, it put me off. 
and I was half expecting what what was coming, especially when Merseybeer said, "You're not going to like this," and I'm like, "Oh shit!" And uh, and this isn't your type of beer, and I'm like, "Oh oh dear." Two kits to twenty three liters, yeah yeah yeah. So basically, you're getting double the strength, so it costs you a bit more. Obviously, if you haven't got the funds, then you can't do that. But if you've got the funds, going going double and going off, it's a very interesting way. <laughs> yeah. He'd be, he'd be disgusted if I, that he didn't have 500 likes. <clears throat> Sometimes, though, you know, on the website front, um, I own a gaming website, uh, emulation, video gaming, hacking, and uh, some of the best, biggest websites in the world are crap. They get that big, they go crap. And, uh, you know, you see that around. And uh, sometimes it's sad, really. They lose that personal touch. Could I drink a whole pint of spirits? <laughs> yeah, quite easily. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hence why I've got no bloody spirits. Off to Alton Towers tomorrow. Good on you, mate. It's going to be late, probably about seven or eight o'clock. More likely eight, because I'm not going to be home till then. I've got um I've got work, car, shop, shopping. So yeah, it's going to be a late one. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock is not a bad time. And for those watching this beer chat, um, our good friend Kent Beer Reviews is also doing a live on his feed. And he is a great lad. And uh, he truly is. And he knows his beers. And he has some amazing beer reviewers joining him on his chat. English beer reviewers, American beer reviewers, you know, all over the world. Truly a very interesting character. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Craig is amazing, yeah. And uh, I watched him dissect a beer the other day. Yeah, Craig is, is unbelievable, yeah. He's gone through a bit of a tough time and uh, quite a bit of a tough time, basically. But uh, he's a sound lad, yeah. And there's some great beer reviewers out there. And for those who, I mean, if you're watching this, you've obviously seen Mr. Bowman Beer Reviews. He is also a cracking beer reviewer. And uh, who gets all the te all the supermarket beers first. <laughs> Which obviously I can't compete with because you just can't. I mean, it's it seems like Nottingham's just last on the fucking list. It's doing my head in. But I'm not one to complain. Am I? No, 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 not complaining at all. <laughs> to be fair, I ain't got the money if I could. Oh, I did miss that comment then. No, nope, no, fucking hell, steaming. Jesus, I fell back on the chair there. Oh. Which Facebook page? Because I've already forgot myself. Is that the the group? Beer Review Community Group? Okay, now. Off pissed. Yeah, was it the double IPA? Because if it was, it was rancid. It really is. Yeah, I need to make, get this beer review community um, page highlighted more. Because I'm I'm steaming on your beer. Fucking hell. I do apologise for, for profanity in the background. Um, but it's strong. 
And, uh, well, sod it. I need to drink the rest of the bottle now. Hey, yeah, jobs are good. Um, on the Sauvignon by Yellowtail. So, yeah, next week, Thursday, uh, wine. Yeah. Thursday, a wine night. We'll chat about wine, uh, proper wine, not home brew. And um, I've got some gingerbread mulled wine. I've got some yellowtail. And I've got some French, some French gear. To tell you the truth, I'm into all sorts of music. I like uh, music from films like Harry Potter music and Lord of the Rings. I like 80s, 90s. It's funny, you know, It's I like a lot of stuff. So, yeah, we're going to have a wine evening next week. And we're also going to have a spirits evening next week. Country and Western. You know, um, Dolly Parton and, oh, God, what was his name? Dolly Parton. Islands in the Stream. What's his bloody name? Such a brilliant song. Islands in the stream. Um, oh, fucking hell. I'm trying to remember his name. Uh, I know the song, obviously. Kenny Rogers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. I, I, do you know, my, my variation on music, one thing I don't like is some dickhead turning, uh, singing like this. Yeah, I went down the pub. I went to the bar. I went for a shit. Oh, yeah. I went for a bar. Yeah. You know when they're talking? Ken Dodd. <laughs> when they're talking and the music's absolutely shit. And they're at number one and you think, who the fucking hell's buying that rubbish? It's shit. Shit music. It's not even music. It's some dickhead talking. Yeah, prune wine. Yeah. I went. I went to Raggy's beer room. I had some prune wine. Oh, yeah. Next minute, I was on the shit house. <clears throat> anyway, one does apologise. I've got a sense of humour. It's not bad. It's, it's really bad. <laughs> It'll be Pato Banton when he leaves here. Get a pint of the old prune juice wine. We'll see that Carlisle man turn into a <laughs> it'll shake the foundations yeah you don't want just a small glass you need a pint a pint of the prune juice oh yeah yeah it'll it'll ruffle the feathers it'll um just like this beer is ruffling my feathers and i've got to go up the house in a minute and get a bollocking off the wine it's coming it's coming i can feel it Top of the Pops. Yeah, it was all a bit fake, wasn't it? To be fair, the prune wine's got a taste. And it, and it, it for what it is, yeah, it's not, it's not going to be everyone's taste. It's not going to be most people's taste. But it has got a taste. And it's, uh, it's, it's an enigma. I mean, so much of an enigma that um, Mr. Bruno's Beer Reviews, Harry, Harry, from Ramsbury Brewery, the head brewer, is a good lad. He looks about 20 years old. I think he's about 28, but he looks about 20. He actually took my prune wine recipe, brewed it himself, and uh, gave it to his dad and his brother and that, and they loved it. So, you know, it's strange, isn't it? <laughs> good evening. Sierra Nevada. It's a lovely ale. Yeah, very nice. I'm drinking um, a homebrew uh, double IPA with two different beer kits um, with one and a half kilos of dextrose uh, brewed together with, with a strong yeast and uh, to make quite the potent um, beer. As you can see, it's a hazy beer. But my God, we're talking at least. So it's a double IPA, 
and we're talking at least nine percent and it absolutely wallops it really does and uh, i mean i've had i've had a i've had a pint of beer then i've had one two three wines and now i'm on this and uh yeah oh dear yes <sighs> feeling it as you, as you would be after all of that you know you would feel it it's a sad state of affairs these days that a lot of companies are reducing their abv uh, to get below different governments um you know limits on on units so i was on um instagram earlier and someone liked one of my um photographs that i post <clears throat> and it's an instagram lady called she drinks beers and uh i think she's from america atlanta in america and uh she was reviewing she posted a photo uh, of an imperial ginger spiced beer spat stout basically from of all people guinness and their open gate brewery or whatever it's called but it was a guinness imperial ginger spiced stout absolutely gobsmacked i seen it and i looked at when i seen the ginger i'm thinking hold on a minute let me just zoom in and i'm going guinness are making an imperial ginger spice stout yeah yeah i'm gobsmacked i am because i'd love that and this yeah this is nice this is it's a lovely beer to be fair Yeah, mixing beer kits, you know, homebrew is such an exciting avenue because you can buy the more expensive beer kits that are clones of the real beers or you can experiment yourself. And it's definitely. Yeah. I need to get some American buddies. In fact, I've got an Amer I've got um, a brother in Chicago. Might have to tap him up and get him to send me some beers. He works from, from McDonald's, of all places. He's very, very high up in McDonald's. And they give free dinners as well, funnily enough. <laughs> yeah, he gets a free burger. He works, in, I, think he, I think he's in the finance sector. Yeah. Yeah, stuff the regular stuff. He wants the regular stuff. Once you've drank it once, you know, you've had your fill, haven't you, basically. No. No, his name's Sean. Yeah. And it's funny, we only knew, we knew about each other 10 years ago. For sure. Is he the Big Mac? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's big. Yeah, he's, he's certainly getting he's certainly getting the American traditions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a big lad now. When I seen him the other year, he was. Uh, I looked and I thought, "Wow, you like your pies, don't you, matey?" Yeah, he likes his pie. But she's old tail. So was it you on earlier, Mister Slurpy, or was it Dougie? It was like your alter ego called Dougie. Yeah, my uh, my oldest brother, he's turned into a beer drinker. He was a wine drinker and he's come off the wines and he's gone on to drinking beers. Yeah. You know, you don't have, if you're on a budget, and let's be fair, there's lots of people on budgets these days. One should always remember that if you're from a poor background, that juice wines, Wilco's kits, you know, if that's all you can afford, then fair play. The Wilco's kits are amazing to play around with. They are good kits, 
on their own. But you can add coffee, chocolate, treacle. You know, the list is endless. You can add stuff to the kits to make them exciting kits. Oh, I'm glad it went well, Slurpee. Okay, mate. I mean, we, you know, like most, we're all sad to, you know, sad to hear of your mum. But um, yeah, I'm glad she had a good send off. One must always remember that, uh, you know, it's remembering the people um, from what they were, from their good side. Never remember the bad side. You know, remember the good side of things. Yeah, craft beer, homebrew. It's all. It's it's a good experience to go down. Um, it's it's a, it's a very interesting bloody hell, one minute, one hour forty one, bollock incoming. Right, I need to crack on. A bell for slurp his mum. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, my wife don't work. We look after our autistic son. We look after, she looks after the grandchildren when, we, when my daughter goes back to work. So, um, you know, we are a one person family earning money. So, you know, the cheapest route is always the best route for me. But obviously I'm, you know, like most people, when you haven't got the money, you, you do your best to get through. And you can get through it if you if you're in innovative in innovative yeah yeah fuck sakes yeah if you're good with money if you're clever you can get through you can do juice wines you can brew beer for cheap you can get through it Slurpee yeah he's a good bloke yeah 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 he's a good lad although he's older than me I think. 97 let's be fair we all of us sitting in this chat would love to get to 97 if we had a stamp that said on our head 97 we'd all love that you know with the pandemic jesus christ we'd all love to get to that age and have our marbles as well there's nothing worse than getting to that sort of age and not knowing anything you know so my wife's grandma she she was in her 90s and but she was still as as mentally uh knowledgeable as she was you know when i knew her 20 odd years before i'd come crawling home drunk <laughs> probably <laughs> i'm not a big drinker to be fair yeah the pandemic you know it's a wake up call, you know. Um, it's a wake up call, you know, to say that um, not a pissy ass version here. Let's, you know, it's a wake up call that we all need to be better people. We all need to stop worrying about colour, stop worrying about religion and countries. And just realise the fact that we all are the human race. What we need to care about is climate and looking after each other's being good people. Good people is what it's all about. And everything else doesn't matter a shit. Anyway, I missed them last few comments. But uh, what's that? <laughs> Sometimes, you know, you have to look, but you have to, sometimes you have to look outside your own body, you know, and uh, you know, when you've gone through shit, you look outside and, and you see, you see, I mean, at the moment, I do the best I can in, in any, whether it's on the beer review channel or to other people, 
I try and be the best person. And uh, none of us are perfect. By God, I'm not perfect. But try and be a decent person. And uh, the more decent people are, are in the world, you know, there's too many people taking the piss. And there's too many people playing certain cards, whether it's a religion card, a race card. You know, that's happening far too much in the world. And, you know, for me, it's all about good people. I don't care for anybody who's an arsehole. Fuck the arseholes. I can't be done with them. But for good people, always have time for good people. And there's lots of us out there. It's what it's matter. Yeah, good people matter. N never about the arseholes. You know, sadly, there's a lot of arseholes out there. But if the good people came forward, then the arseholes. Oh, Bruce, yeah, definitely. Yeah, being the best to each other, it's, it's, it's the way forward, isn't it? It really is. And then you meet people in real life. And, uh, you know, I came home one day. Here's a little story. I came home one day and I was expecting a parcel from Low Cost Beer, of all places. And I walked in and I looked at this box on the floor and I'm like, the fuck? That's not what I ordered. I didn't say them words. And uh, there's this bloke in my house and I looked and I didn't recognise him. And it's our good friend, Mr Goathead. And, you know, he drove up from Wales and, uh, and, you know, the random act of kindness that he performed. Then he came down to the beer room, you know, and these little things in life mean so much, you know, random acts of kindness. Awesome. Came into the bear room, sat on the uh, the proverbial seat, as it were. Nothing special. It's just a shed. But um, I do apologise. But um, you know. But it means it means. It... <laughs> and uh, you know, it's like the first person to come and meet the bear room, and it was it was quite special for me, to be fair. And uh, you know. And uh, there's been a journey. <laughs> In the last year, there's been a real journey with the with, with the channel and myself in particular. Um, and uh, we're, all, we're all on a journey, whether we, you know, we're all on that. If, if we suffer with mental health, we're all on that journey. And it's nice that, um, that so many people are good in the world. To bring us out that journey. Anyway, I'm rattling too long. I'm going to get a bollocking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This last year, you know, if if you've not... L you've touched me bell. Yeah. <laughs> not that bell. <laughs> <coughs> Fucking hell. Making myself laugh now. But, um, yeah, if you've not been on a journey in the last year and not learnt a lesson... You, then then the last year has been lost on you. You know, you've got to look back on this last year and think, wow, how can I better myself? We can always do better. <laughs> oh. That is an absolutely immense double IPA. So I'd like to thank absolutely everyone for joining me tonight on our first homebrew chat night. Very much um, not really going into reviews or anything like that. Trying some different stuff over the months to come when I start brewing myself. And uh, we'll go further, go different. It's like kissing the Pope's ring. I want to kiss the Pope's ring. <laughs> Fuck you now. Uh, you don't know where his ring's been. Could you imagine? Yeah. The Pope hangs his ring out and then he's like this. He's got his finger in his hand and he's holding his ring out. The next minute he's like, he drops his trousers and say, yeah, here's my ring. 
and uh, I do apologise, Lorraine. <clears throat> but you can imagine, you know, it's, um, yeah, yeah. There's limits in life. But yeah, thank you everyone for coming tonight. It's been an interesting night. I'm in for a bollocking, nearly two hours. Wife's going to moan, but there you go. Um, I, I get used to bollockings. <clears throat> um, our good friend, Mr. Kent Beer Reviews, is doing his live on his channel. And he is an exceptional beer reviewer. And he has beer reviewers from all over the world. So if you're interested in beer, please drop onto his channel and uh, say hi to him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he's got shit on his... Yeah, can I just kiss your ring? Oh, fucking hell. What have you been eating? Or oh, drinking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or oh, wiping your bum. Yeah. But anyway, thank you, everyone. It's been a great one. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, Kent Beer Reviews, his channel's still going. So if you're not, if you haven't got anything to, if you're still, you know, watching YouTube, jump on. He's a great lad. He really is. And uh, see everyone soon. Cheers, all. Been a good one. That bollocking's coming. <clears throat> Here we go. Cheers.